if you're in direct response or you're selling pretty much any product online, thinking about adding a subscription component to your cart has probably crossed your mind. And if you're already doing subscriptions, then it's important to know whether you're doing them correctly and how you can maximize your revenue. So on today's episode of Uncensored Direct Marketing, I'm actually going to dive into subscriptions and a couple of key things that you should know if you're going to add subscriptions to your cart or if you're already you know, doing or offering subscriptions, some best practices to you know, make as much money as possible while trying to lower your chargebacks and your refunds. Um, so without further ado, let's kind of jump right into it. I'm going to go through a couple of uh, key pieces of information and then give you some tips that can really maximize your revenue. So be sure to listen till the end and make sure that you like and subscribe for more content. And please, if you like this episode, share with your friends to make sure that, you know, you share the wealth of data that's being shared on a weekly basis. Um, so one important thing that you should know, and the basis of pretty much every decision um, that I make with my clients at Direct Paynet is let's know your data. So where do you stand? So if you're offering subscriptions, number one thing is how many customers are choosing the subscription if it's an optional subscription, of course. If it's an op optional subscription, how many customers are taking that subscription? Then how many are actually successful at rebilling on the first cycle? And then how many cycles do they stay on average in your churn rate? So it's important to know these three specific things so you can know your benchmarks and know how or what you're, you're looking to attain. So it's not just about making more money or anything like that. It's really knowing because you can make a key difference and you can make different decisions for, for example, um, you know, your first month rebuild or how long somebody stays after that. So keep that in mind know your data, make sure that you're, you know, the numbers are clear and that everybody on the team working on this understands where you're at and where you're going, what your goal is. So, um, another thing, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there. I know that, you know, if you're doing subscriptions, you may be attached to it. Or if you're thinking about doing it, a lot of, you know, people in your circle are likely telling you it's good. You're going to make a lot more money and so on and so forth. I do agree, you know, subscriptions are definitely, um, an additional source of revenue and can really, you know, uh, make a huge difference in your revenue at the end of the day. But there are, you know, some pitfalls commonly that come when you have subscriptions, for example, subscriptions will likely result to more chargebacks to more refunds, and then some other costs that you may not think about, but added customer service. Um, you know, if you need to, to, have if you have reviews and people feel like you know they got scammed because they 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 got signed up to subscription they maybe maybe didn't know about and so forth so there's a lot of you know other costs that you have to kind of keep in mind you may need to hire more customer service just to deal with you know customers calling in about subscriptions and so forth so think about you know your best billing practices and think about offering perhaps a bulk buy or doing an AB test, a subscription versus a bulk buy. What I mean by bulk buy is if somebody's coming in and they're buying a bottle of whatever you're selling, offer them, for example, six bottles. You know, you may not get the continuity, but you offer them six bottles, you make a lot more money right at the onset. And you don't need that continuity in order to make a profit. So keep that in mind. Also, you know, instead of continuity or, you know, rebuilds, you can say you can offer a couple of upsells or, you know, um, affiliate offers that you have with other products. So there's other ways, you know, consider um, all the ways that you can have for different billing practices and what works best for your business model. Um, so, you know, obviously I talk a lot about health supplements and content and, and drop shipping and CBD and so forth. So these are things most commonly thought about in these industries. And a lot of times we have merchants who have a lot of chargebacks and they you know, obviously need to minimize those and minimize costs and save their merchant accounts. So they switch to a bulk buy model and they don't see a huge difference in revenue when you consider all the, the different factors that come into play when you offer subscriptions. So, you know, if you have enough traffic and you can split test something, you know, that's usually the best way to go to figure out if that's a good idea for you to, to change your, your pricing model. Now, if you are obviously attached to subscriptions or if you want to test subscriptions, I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of things that you should do 
or you should add to your cart to ensure that you maximize your subscription revenue. So this one's a no brainer, Visa account updater, MasterCard account updater. So MAU and VAU. These are just tools that allow you to update credit card information once a card expires or a customer changes their card number. So you could be getting, you know, expired cards or card doesn't exist and so forth messages on your rebills. And these are easily fixed with just literally a flag in your gateway. You just turn it on. Um, you'd probably have to talk to your processor or your, your gateway provider and just say, Hey, I want to sign up for visa account updater, MasterCard account updater. Um, there's a small cost attached to it. And then you can just add that. So what happens is at the end of the, when you're rebuilding a customer, if that rebuild declines because it's an expired card or it says the card number doesn't exist, visa will go ahead and update the card details. If it's an active subscription and the customer hasn't charged back. So, you know, whatever the cost is, that your processor is charging you, um, it's probably just a good idea to do it because you can um, capture more subscri subscription revenue quite easily like that. So, you know, you're getting at least a couple of percent every month of expired cards or wrong numbers and so forth. So you would be able to save those quite easily. Um, another quick tip is stick to the same rebuild schedule. Uh, I know that a lot of people say, oh, well, that's, yeah, that's no brainer. But what happens sometimes, depending on the CRM or the subscription mechanism that you're using, it can change by a couple of days before, a couple of days back. And then over the course of a couple of months, it really changes the date that um, the rebuild is supposed to happen. So if for example, you capture money from somebody on the 15th of the month. Well, try again on the 15th of the month. That means they've paid their bills or they've done whatever needs to happen in order to allow for that subscription. So try to stick to the same rebuild schedule. You will always have the most success because you know that, you know, historically that that customer had money on that day. Um, if by chance, you know, you get a customer that declines. So, you know, you try to charge the card, the customer declines. Don't try again the next day or, you know, the day after you have to wait at least three business days. You know, if somebody pays their card, for example, today it could take two or three days before the balance is cleared on their card. So trying the next day or the day after is just you wasting money on transaction fees. So wait at least three days before you try again. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's other strategies to, to maximize, but you definitely, you know, there's some CRMs and some, uh, subscription modules that will literally try after a couple of hours or the next day. It's just, very wasteful and, and unnecessary. Um, talking about trying and when to try at the beginning of the month. So a lot of people pay their bills at the end of the month and have more money at the beginning of the month. So if you try to bill somebody on the 17th of the month and you get declined, then try again at the beginning of the month, like on the first or second of the, the following month, you likely will have better success or the best success that you can have. So that's, you know, just, uh, you obviously need to have the technology to support that, but it's usually a lot of, uh, rebilling or subscription modules allow for that. Um, the reason that I don't want you guys, or, you know, just a common thing that you don't want to be doing is attempting, you know, 10 or 15 times that same transaction. There are a lot of companies, um, they, they're called decline salvage companies or services. So basically they take all the declines of your subscriptions and they try to recoup them. Now, obviously making more money is in everybody's best interest, but there's a few common pitfalls with these types of services. And, you know, every service is different. So I'm not, you know, saying they're all bad, but you, you may want to just get a little bit more involved to understand what they're doing with the transactions to make sure that you agree with it. Now, if you're considering this type of service, or if you're considering putting in some practices yourself to salvage some of your decline subscriptions, then you want to remember each attempt that you, you have, or you make is there's a transaction fee. So if you try 10 times and you're paying 25 cents per transaction, you know, and you do this for all your declines, you may in fact be losing money depending on how many you recuperate. So keep that in mind. Another thing you should keep in mind is that if you keep trying 10 or 12 times, you know, you, your processor works on an algorithm. So if you send them a lot of bad transactions or transactions that decline, then you likely will also 
get a lower um, approval ratio at the front end because they may not be willing to take risks on certain transactions. So I won't get super um, in depth on the, the algorithms of your payment processor, so if you have any questions, though, you can definitely reach out. But if you send a lot of bad transactions, you can understand that logically um, your bank may scrub your transactions a little bit more because you're sending them, you know, bad traffic. So keep that in mind and don't don't try too many attempts. You know, after a couple attempts, um, you kind of should be done. Another thing that you should consider is when you're attempting, um, you know, after the first attempt that declines, if it comes back with what we call a hard decline, a hard decline is lost or stolen card, for example, that's not going to change. You should not be trying these cards because again, it shows that you're not being a responsible merchant to your processor. You're sending a lot of stolen cards, for example. So again, the algorithm is going to adjust and you may have, you know, more issues on the front end. So don't, you know, make sure you understand which decline messages should be reattempted and which should not before you try. Um, so those are some quick tips. You know, these are easy things that you can do, easy things you can analyze. We can really, really go in depth, but then it becomes a case by case situation. I wanted to give you guys kind of a quick overview of the most common things that you should be doing if you're offering subscriptions. So as usual, please like subscribe and share with any of your friends uh, that would enjoy the content. And I look forward to hearing from you and see you next week.